Hello and welcome to Flash Chapter 3, uh, Lesson 3, specifically dealing with buttons. Now in this particular case, or in this particular chapter or lesson, what we're doing is we're basically going to be creating a graphic, and then what we're going to be doing is converting that graphic to a symbol, specifically a button, and then because it has a but it is a button the button has certain um criteria that it's going to work with so for instance mine is already done and if i wanted to come along in here there's up over down and hit and these are criteria that go along with the button itself so for instance up meaning i'm not touching anything this will appear to be red over, meaning I have moused over this and now it's appearing to be gray. Down, I've clicked it, it appears to be green. Hit, hit gives me the area with which I will have the mouse click on. So this, those four criteria give me the, um, the way that particular button is going to work. And what we're going to do is we're going to build the button from the ground up. And it's one of those things as you go through and you follow the instructions, you're like, oh, this is great. And then about hopefully halfway through, you kind of understand what's going on. But I wanted you to get that general impression. And we're not confined to just making this particular button. What we can do is we can do this larger. You could create a dancing um duck to go with our duck themes that I click on you know I mouse over it and he looks one way and then I click on it it looks another way and then I take my mouse over and it looks a different way so you're if you move your mouse across it can move one way or another and it's just a switch of graphics in a very very rudimentary way once again up I'm not clicked on it what does it look like over I take my mouse over it this is what it looks like down I take my mouse to it I click this is what it looks like. Hit gives me the area that it inter interact with. So if I'm uh, over it or down, this is the, the blue rectangle represents the area with which it's going to detect my, my mouse pointer is working with it. Okay, so you have the general idea of that's what we're going to do. So let's switch back to our scene. Uh, the very first thing I do, I want to do is I want to click the rectangle primitive tool. Now in my rectangle primitive tool, I've already set the strike to, uh, excuse me, the stroke color, or basically the outline, to be no stroke. And my gradient, I'm going to click red gradient. Now this is going to be my be beginning graphic. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along, I'm going to click on this gradient transform tool, excuse me, my, my mistake. I'm going to click on my rectangle tool, and I'm going to click on the rectangle primitive tool. Now when you do our rectangle primitive tool, the first thing you'll notice is mine is already set uh, where it has the um, five or for my rectangle options. And what that means is I have come along to the properties here and changed all of these to five. And that pushes the, uh, the outside of the rectangle as learned in previous lessons uh, to be slightly smaller. So now I go from a rectangle with square edges to a rectangle with rounded edges. All right. I'm going to kind of move up. Oh going to move my item down a little bit, make it easier to deal with here, or I'll try to at least. All right, so now what I'm going to do, since I've done that, is I'm going to um, zoom in. So I want to zoom in on my item, and this is all these items are taking place on Flash 3-18, uh, create a button. So I'm zooming in because I'm going to transform. You'll notice that this particular... Uh, the gradient has, if I'm looking at this, you don't recognize it as a stoplight. Whereas if I come along, I'm going to turn on my free gradient, which looks like this right here, gradient transform tool. And I'm going to click on this, and it should give me my gradient transform. What I'm doing is I'm going to take this button right here, and I'm going to drag it inwards. Now what's going on here is I'm changing my opposite color. So now as I drag that inwards, I'm co um, condensing the red part so it actually looks like a red stoplight. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see we've done that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on our selection tool. It looks like this, and I'm on number 9 and 10. I'm going to make sure it's selected, which is true, and then I'm going to Click my modify and 
convert to symbol right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define how that symbol looks. Now we've done this before. We didn't quite understand what was going on, but now we're going to take this a little bit further. So I'm going to call this B, which stands for button, and I'm going to call this signal. And in my case, I'm going to call it sample. Now you would just call it signal. The reason you're going to do that is, is I am, and I'm right here where it says top, or excuse me, type, I'm going to change it to button. That means that I am changing this to a button symbol. So when I do a button symbol, those four elements related to a button symbol are automatically going to be assigned to this. So after I push OK, now it's a button symbol. And if I go to my library, I should have um, B signal sample. So in my case, I'm going to move it right under my buttons so I can actually see it. Once again, I went to library and B signal sample. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my signal sample and I'm going to choose edit. That's going to allow me to then come in here. Now, as soon as you choose edit, I'm actually editing my symbol. I have up, over, down, and hit. Remember the way I uh, defined that criteria before. So there's what it looks like when I'm not clicked on it and everything's great. Now I click on my over element and I do insert, timeline, keyframe. That allows me to insert a keyframe right there so I can define what it is. So when I'm now on the over part, uh, I want to change that to, to the gray gradient color. So I've had it selected. I come along here. I change it from my gradient to gray. So that means when I'm over it, it's going to turn gray. Now I go to the down which is going to be right here. I'm going to insert, timeline, keyframe. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to a green gradient color, a green gradient color. So I go along in my tools, I go under my gradient, and I change that to a green gradient color. That allows me now, when I push down, that's what it's going to look like. The next thing is my hit space. So I click on hit. I do insert, timeline, keyframe. And what that allows me to do is I've I'm actually going to define where it is that I'm going to be able to interact with or the border. I'm going to change it to blue. It can be any color you want it to be. Blue just is a little bit easier uh, to actually work with. Now, mine got a little strange, so I'm going to undo the fill color. And I'm going to actually click off it so I am not have it selected. That was a mistake easily rectified. Now what I want to do is I want to click on, I want to make sure I'm clicked on the rectangular tool. So I check that rectangle tool as it appears on step seven. I make sure it's blue, which is true. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle around my object. And what I'm doing, once again, is I'm creating the space with which you interact with this thing. So I've done that. I'm going to go ahead and I could save it if I want to. In my case, it's already done. So I click on my scene. And then I make sure that I hit on my control menu and enable simple buttons is clicked, meaning or checked, meaning that I can actually interact with the buttons that I have selected. Now you'll notice the button that I have on there is the signal sample. So. The blue part, which we cannot see, is my interaction area. Now, you'll notice my interaction area was rather large. So as soon as I move my mouse pointer in that interaction area, it has a, um, an effect. So this turns gray because that's my mouse over. Up, meaning I'm not interacting with it. Now, if I take it over, it does turn gray. If I click on it, it turns green. So I've created a button now that has all three of these elements. And going back to where we talked before, I could extend this further. I could make a dancing mouse, a dancing duck, however I wanted to do that interactivity. But this allows me a lot more power. And remember, if you take it even further beyond, hey, I got to do this lesson because I'm told, um, you could actually create this, export it, then use it in some sort of window or in sort of movie maker and I keep going back to Windows Movie Maker because it's the easiest but there's lots of other products out there so you can design different things in different uh, tools and then combine them together to make one pretty good easy to use graphic especially in Flash. Alright well that continues uh, 
or continues. That finishes chapter three, number three, or lesson three, specifically about creating buttons. If you have any particular questions, let me know. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll continue.